there guys, uh, this, this video is on Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair and their WrestleMania 36 title match, uh, NXT Women's title match. Rhea Ripley, this is an article that was written on uh, Daily DDT. Rhea Ripley is defending her WWE NXT Women's title against, that should say Charlotte Flair, but, uh, Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 36. Here's three reasons why the Nightmare should beat the Queen. Okay. I agree with that. I think Rhea Ripley should beat Charlotte. There is no argument from most people when it comes to calling Charlotte Flair Miss WrestleMania. Oh, I went over this on a, on a previous video. Anyway, um, I'll continue. Her matches are usually one of the most anticipated on the card, on a match card every year. Charlotte is known for putting on great performances and giving the fans something to enjoy every time she enters the squared circle. Mix Flair's showmanship with Rhea's dominant in-ring presence it is destined to be a great hard-hitting bout. This year's match between the Queen and rising star Rhea Ripley is no different. Well, this year's WrestleMania will be much different than WrestleMania's past, uh, with the growing threat of the coronavirus. This match is still is still one people are ready to see go down. Rhea Ripley undoubtedly will be one of Charlotte's biggest threats in the ring. As Rhea has been on a rising war path the last six months, and I do not see that momentum shifting, nor should it shift. I'll agree with that part. They are on track to portray her as an equal to some of the other top women in WWE, and that is exactly what NXT needs to make new stars and continue to put their women's division the must-see thing to watch weekly. Here are a couple of reasons I feel Rhea should win at the Showcase of the Immortals. Uh, before I continue, I will ad address that bit. Um, Triple H down in NXT does, does a great job in building um, like new stars. That's not just the women and the men as well. It's just when they go on to the main roster, they're made to look like shit. Most of them. Well, I think the NXT Women's Division right now, I would say, probably the best in wrestling. Uh, Rhea Ripley made a name for herself on NXT UK, becoming the women's champ, and has made her mark even more after coming over to NXT in the US. With an outstanding showing at Survivor Series and TakeOver War Games, Rhea has made a name for herself as one of the most dominant women in WWE. Solely based off momentum, Rhea's rising star power is undeniable and seeing how she just won the title last December, I do not see her dropping the title any time soon. Yeah? True. It would make complete sense if they wanted to continue Rhea's momentum for the year of 2020, the match against a prominent name like Charlotte Flair is to put Rhea Ripley on the mainstream map. Charlotte has made a name for herself in WWE and worldwide as being one of the most athletic superstars on the roster. Ripley beating the 10-time women's champion would not only be a great WrestleMania moment for Rhea, but skyrocket Rhea's rise even more as the face of the NXT's women's division. Uh, been there, done that. If you look at Charlotte Flair's resume, she has beaten some of the best and most talented women on the roster, past and present. 
most notably this past summer Charlotte deemed herself the queen of all errors <laughs> um, after defeating Hall of Famer Hall of Famer and WWE legend Trish Stratus. There are very few people Flair hasn't beaten, so in turn very few women have beaten her. However, there was one woman who has pinned the Queen clean recently, aside from Becky Lynch. In the case people have forgotten, last fall Real was part of a triple threat match on SmackDown in the build to Survivor Series where, where not only she won, she won by pinning Charlotte for the clean three count. Uh, in, in the match, Charlotte had Sasha Banks' legs locked on the mat in the figure four as she started to bridge for the figure eight. Rhea snuck in the ring, crawled under a distracted Charlotte and pinned her shoulders one, two, three. There is an argument to be made that Charlotte chose Rhea as her opponent to face as retribution, maybe looking to right that loss. However, it seems Rhea may have the number, may have her number, knowing the Queen may have some doubts in the back of her mind. Um, Charlotte doesn't come across as someone who would have doubts in her mind. Even like in the storyline, but I get the point. I just don't quite agree with that. NXT on the map. Wednesday Night Wars has been dominating social media over the past six months, and the constant comparisons. While I feel we should be celebrating the different options we have as wrestling fans, it seems inevitable people want to draw battle lines. Um, I, I, I agree with that. Um, it, it's, it's great to have, like, AEW as an option as well as NXT. Well, NXT puts on, like, the best shows in WWE. And AEW's do, doing really well at the moment. So, Wednesday night... Or in some cases, mainly with the casuals, um, they tend to mock the um, ratings between AEW and NXT. Especially on Twitter, I've seen that a lot on Twitter. But then again, they are casual, so that's all. Um, they were announced, NXT were announced as a third brand line going into Survivor Series to help boost their ratings against AEW. They weren't really like the third brand, so to speak, in the Royal Rumble build, which they should have been. But um, as far as like a good amount of the audience not familiar with the individual talent, that's true, sadly. But that is true. Because a lot of a lot of the fans that watch the um, main roster still don't watch NXT.
yeah, it may do. Um, I doubt that it will. I doubt that it will, though. A, a lot of casuals just don't watch NXT. Um, I I don't understand why. But, oh well. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like, subscribe, and don't forget to share. And I'll see you next time.